Hello, and again, welcome to this group team. It's, uh, I forgot the rest of what I was gonna say, but anyway, welcome back. Look at how beautiful this is. I'm sure with higher graphics settings, that would look prettier than this. Ah, screen space reflections. <laughs> right, let's drop off these stars and then head to the mega structure. Nice. Yep, we're almost done. Seventy-five percent. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, uh... That's where the sky... Kinda... The images are all cornered up together up there. Oops. Probably low graphic settings, that's what I'm gonna blame it on. Alright, here we are. Let us board the VTOL. Alright, I'm taking us in. Let's hope we can find the big guy. Oh, I didn't know if there's a conversation opportunity down there. Oh well. From Eustathius to Athena. Dearest Athena, I don't know if you will see this. You have become even more distant from the affairs of New Jerusalem than I have. I miss speaking to you, Cornelius, and I fear that some of your estrangement is my own fault. I know things are not as you would wish them to be, and the city is drifting away from that bold vision you established. This is not because of your leadership or lack thereof. You did not fail, I did. I know I've said it before, but the new Alexandria disaster was my fault. I'm the one who took the initiative, and I'm the one who made the mistake. Yes, there should have been procedures in place, but it was my role to create such procedures, Athena, not yours. I wish I had listened to Byron when he said he we had to establish another settlement immediately. Learn from the pain, don't let it fester. He was right. That's where the rot set in, and I'm sorry. With love, Eustathius. Athena Author. The Machines, from the Author's Note to Athena Reborn, a novel. If my work has meant something to you, if Athena had any kind of impact on you, if some story in Wonder Tales from the periphery moved you or made you think, then there is something about myself that I need to share with you. It's the only autobiographical, autobiographical fact I have any interest in sharing, the only thing about me that matters to you outside my work. Every breath that I take, and so every story that I write, is only possible because of technology. There are no natural remedies, no spiritual alternatives for what I was born with, my existence is wholly contingent upon a level of technological sophistication which was heretofore unimaginable, and which, well, in many ways defined the coming era. When you long for a return to simpler times, you wish for a world in which I could not exist. If you are looking for answers, consider the fact that I was granted the blessing of this technology despite being born into poverty, and my writing never having been particularly lucrative. The civilizational structures I live within were arranged in such a way that this technology would be deployed to save my life. And are these structures not also, at the end of the day, a kind of machine? What is the state? What is civilization if not a machine? Think about what this means. 
what this is. Is it symp systemic compassion? Is it liberation from nature? Is it equality of opportunity? Whatever your belief system, think hard about what it means that I am alive because of these machines. And I have created something that matters to you. Thank you for reading. Wow, this is a really powerful... Powerful few paragraphs here. I like this. Clockwork. Exerted from orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton. All the towering materialism which dominates the modern mind rests ultimately upon one assumption, a false assumption. It is supposed that if a thing goes on repeating itself, it is probably dead, a piece of clockwork. People feel that if the universe was personal, it would vary. If the sun were alive, it would dance. This is a fallacy even in relation to known fact. For the variation in human affairs is generally brought into them not by life, but by death. By the dying down or breaking off of their strength or desire. A man varies his movements because of some slight element of failure or fatigue. But perhaps God is strong enough to exult in monotona, uh, monotony. It is possible that God says every morning, do it again to the sun, and every evening, do it again to the moon. It may not be automatic, necessarily, that makes all daisies alike. Maybe that God makes every daisy separately, but has never got tired of making them. Maybe that he has the eternal appetite of infancy, where we have sinned and grown old, and our father is younger than we. Miranda says, It's strange. The idea is slightful, but it's also completely and obviously untrue. Cornelius says, That's one of many reasons Chesterton is worth reading. He's wrong about a lot of things, but he's wrong about them in an interesting way. Miranda says, It's such a shame, though. He seems to want to restore the magic of the world, but he can only re-enchant the surface. Whereas the true magic, the perfect beauty that feels like the revelation, is, is found underneath in what he dismisses as clockwork. clockwork. Yeah, that's interesting. Founding 10. Hypatius Journal number 10. Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem, Day 680. New Jerusalem, that's the name we picked. Am I sad that my suggestion did win? Maybe a little. But it is a good name. A fitting name. A name that we can be proud of. With it comes a new kind of optimism. Everyone is thinking of the future once more. I, for one, am glad that we had recovered our equilibrium, our determination. Athena and Cornelius are certainly bustling with plans and bright visions of the future, and when they tell us of these dreams of theirs, it's hard not to be drawn in by the pretty pictures they paint. Speaking of which, I am becoming more and more fascinated with ancient human art, and thinking about our own role in making the next step in that long history. And the citizens of Gehenna found meaning in art, and they were imprisoned. A free people should be able to accomplish so much more. Yeah. Interesting. Is this the first time we're going to ride one of these elevators and see how they work? Yay! I found another elevator. My favorite. <laughs> Whoa. Once again, I have no idea where I am. No sign of Prometheus so far. Hope you're doing better, 1K. This is quite a place. said this before, but look at the size of this. How can all of this be one machine? This is what you get when one machine builds a bigger machine, which builds an even bigger machine. That's our whole history, isn't it? The whole history of humankind. And it's not just machines. It's science. It's literature. Knowledge builds on knowledge.
Interesting. Yeah, this place definitely seems quite powerful. Whatever it does. Here's the title screen! <laughs> yes, and the music is quite epic here. Be careful, 1K. We don't know what's down there. Pull lever. Hmm. I'm not going to do that just yet. Unless we actually have to. Remove Prometheus chain pins. Zero out of five. Interesting. Yeah, I think we'll leave the center one for last. trying to go right now. Up in there. Oh, okay. Interesting. Wow, this place is big. Lots of nature going inside of it too, interestingly. dramatic, isn't it? I thought there's gonna be a puzzle up here. I don't see one, though. Isn't that pretty?
Very curious. Got some motion blur going on with it. I thought I turned off motion blur though. But yeah, motion blur strength is zero. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. <laughs> Also, you do got to be careful with these, because, uh... I saw somebody who got softlocked because they, they jumped off a bit too early before walking all the way to the end to get the completion of the bridge. Oh, he's wearing pants and shoes and... Or like, something like that. Interesting. I have a feeling that... There's some correlation between Pandora and Athena, and Prometheus and Cornelius. Maybe Miranda is referenced by the Sphinx. Then again, Miranda is supposedly dead, so... Who would the Sphinx correlate to in that case, unless that was just made beforehand? Because we, we don't know how interactive the responses are. It could just be some kind of AI or something. All very curious. Is this here? What's on the other side? Oh, is this just where we were? Okay. Well, alright then. Right. 
much space in here. Kind of interesting art here. How it kind of like is sticking out of the wall a little bit. Whoa. That's a lot of water. Can we jump down <laughs> without resetting ourselves? Uh, I'm gonna let speedrunners figure that one out. Is that... Oh, is that an elevator? Okay, I thought it might have been a fizzler for a puzzle. That's a long way down, down there. Let's see who's closer. Let's go to this further one first. Interesting. What's this about? That's not helpful.
What an elaborate thing to do. <laughs> oh, it's so tempting to try and see what happens if you walk on that from up here. I mean, it looks like you can make the jump, doesn't it? Well, here goes. Hey, did it! <laughs> oh. Oh, is that a drone? Interesting. What's that drone all about? Is that Yakut? I don't think you can get up here, 1K. I'll take care of the puzzle. Just give me an hour or two. <laughs> oh, invisible walls! I wonder if that's always the last one you do? Or but if, if this has to connect over here, then wait. If I do this and then that, what? Why did you get to play the I puzzle? Wow, I feel really smart. Also, never doing that again. <laughs> So there was an actual puzzle over there, but we didn't get to play it. Yiku did for us. Apparently these robots are not good at climbing at all. That rubble was barely a blockage. And how did Yiku get over there? I guess some sort of elevator system was in that column? Yeah, that has to be the explanation. things and for you to know the truth of the Alpha and the Omega, of the beginning and the end. I will send you visions of the truth, but remember that prophecies are a heavy burden. New Jerusalem sounds like such a beautiful place. So, how did you decide to leave? I know what we're trying to accomplish here, and I believe in it. But for you, New Jerusalem was home. What changed that? It took me a long time to realize that something was wrong. Oh, I'd noticed that something was off, that something had changed since the early days, but I couldn't really put my finger on it. So I ignored it. And then one day I woke up to realize I was no longer Athena. Instead, I had been transformed into the Founder. A remote figure of legend, mythologized in my own time. But if it bothered you, couldn't you just talk to them? If you share the truth with someone, 
They should change their minds, shouldn't they? Oh, I wished it worked that way, Miranda. I really do, but I barely knew the last generations. In the beginning, I was there for every birth. I explained our history, talked about our future, but it, at some point, I got so busy building that future that I lost touch. They thought of me as a remote figure because that's what I was. But can you change that? I tried. But they already saw me as the founder. The myth was too powerful, and it was already taking on a life of its own. I'd set a goal of 1,000 citizens. The number was arbitrary. Just a nice round number, nothing more. But just like I became the founder, it became the goal. Another part of the myth. And maybe that could have been all right. Myths are a part of who we are, but something else crept in. The old human self-hatred. So why didn't you just tell them to change? To go a different way? They would have listened to you. No, they would have obeyed me, like my siblings in the simulation had obeyed. And that's when I realized I had to leave. We can show them the future, Miranda, but we can't force them to accept it. After all this time, I have it. I finally have it. The mechanics of the cosmos. From quarks to galactic filaments. Everything that makes the world what it is make, makes us who we are. In a single equation. The key to understanding the machine that is the universe and to controlling it. A theory of everything. And she was right. The language of creation is a melody and it's Beautiful. Every future is possible now. Every future, except... Except one with Miranda in it. I can do anything, except bring her back. Or unbreak Cornelius' heart. Byron was right. The founder was always a fiction. She's just a person. A theory of everything. She solved it. She solved the last puzzle. You need to get out of there. We'll talk about this later. this time, we thought we were honoring Athena, but all we did was betray everything she believed in. She must have been so lonely. We might as well have exiled her. Maybe that's what all this is about. The puzzles, the towers, the entities. It's a test, a way for us to prove that we're worthy of her legacy. Finally, it all makes sense. Anti-gravity, matter synthesis, teleportation. It's not just one new technology. It's control over physics. Manipulating the base layer of reality itself. Rearranging the building blocks of the universe. If we can gain control of the megastructure, we can do anything we want. I'm not even talking about our energy problem. We can build anything we want. We can go anywhere we want. It's all up to us. That's what Athena wanted for us. To give us a chance to be who we want to be. Yeah. That's a pretty big fire, that uh, met metaphorical fire, isn't it? Is everyone okay? All good. I'm taking us back now. That's a relief. Meanwhile, there's been a development. You'll see when you land. How are things on your end? 
The energy fluctuations seem to be dying down. Looks like the system is coming out of lockdown. Good. Let's hope we don't regret this. And these energy clouds just fly about? That seems terribly dangerous. We haven't had any problems so far. Except for losing one of the first companions, of course. No, no, I don't blame you, Al. I know what he's like. And I'm the one who agreed to all this in the first place. That's why I had to see it for myself. It is dreadfully imposing, though, isn't it? Hard to believe the Founder would build something so... sinister. The Mayor's here? Well, this should be interesting. Probably want me to have this cutscene up here or something. Ah, 1K. Welcome back. I'm sure you're surprised by my presence here. Don't worry, neither I nor my advisors will be getting in your way. But I've decided that I need to see this place for myself. These visions sent to you by the entity that calls itself Prometheus are deeply concerning, of course. But we cannot take them at face value. In fact, it's crucial that we do not do so. We cannot simply abandon all that we believe because of a dream, no matter how vivid. No. If the Founder really built all this, then it must have a purpose. It must be a test, designed to remind us of the trials that created us. But what is she trying to tell us? What are we being tested for? I believe that Byron's fate shows us the dangers of temptation. As Elohim attempted to deceive Athena in the simulation, commanding her not to ascend, so Prometheus is deceiving us with his visions. I think you've got Prometheus and Pandora swapped up, Mayor. <laughs> It's only natural, given what you've experienced. And perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps everything we believe about the Founder is indeed a lie. But let's not be quite so pessimistic just because of a dream, shall we? After all, can it really be a coincidence that you came along on this mission? It seems to me that you have been chosen. You are the fulfillment of the goal. Don't forget that. All right. Well, back to more puzzles, finally, I suppose. We have Western Delta, West 1, a river valley gradually drowned by the encroaching sea. The brackish water is a unique ecosystem with many endemic species. We have Anthropic Hills, West 2. This rocky highland terrain has been dramatically sculpted by the technology contained in the megastructure. And we have High Plain, a high altitude plateau in the island's western mountain range. The surrounding region often has restricted visibility due to fog. Well, <laughs> here we go, I suppose. How's the system looking, Melville? Any obvious changes? It's still a mess, but things are clearing up. I can access some of the subroutines that I was locked out of before. Nothing is obviously malfunctioning, I think. Does it still accord special significance to 1K? Yes, it recognizes 1K as a user. I'm just hacking things. As I suspected, the Founder sees you, 1K. I mean, it's probably just because I'm the one who's been doing all the puzzles. <laughs> 1K! 
What can I do for you, 1K? I believe that journalism serves an important function in our society, and I'm dedicated to reporting the truth with accountability and responsibility. It means understanding that I can't just publish things without considering their impact. Serious disruptions to the social fabric of New Jerusalem could endanger lives. That's not journalism anymore. Uh, excuse me, what? <laughs> excuse me? Sir, I'm not sure I agree with that. On multiple levels? Uh, right. Prior is this person, the one who had the very negative perspective on everything. Yeah, uh, I'm not a fan of Cryer personally. What happened here? We got new music at least. Another one of these. And then I saw a Prometheus one on the way in. Father, what is my purpose? Do I have a purpose? Mother says purpose is something we choose. But I feel like... Like there's something there. Something that's been there from the moment I was born. Maybe even before. Well, there are many ways of looking at this. And everyone's experience is different, so you'll have to make up your own mind. But I have a little theory, if you'd like to humor your old man. Of course. What is it? The universe is eternal, but it's always lost in a deep, dreamless sleep. You are a tiny little bit of the universe that's suddenly woken up. And you've realized that being awake is better than being asleep. And that gives you a purpose. And what is my purpose? To be, Miranda. Just to be. That's a nice way of looking at it. One k listen. I wanted to ask you something. From your perspective, as someone who's still new to our society, do you think New Jerusalem betrayed Athena? Our options are yes. In a democracy, people are not obliged to support what their leaders want them to. No, it was necessary to turn away from our ideas. Or New Jerusalem isn't monolithic. It's not. You're right. And Byron and a handful of others stood up for Athena. But what did I do? Just kept working. The occasional sarcastic remark isn't resistance. It's not fighting for something. It's just thinly disguised apathy. He believes that we were that you were wrong. Make different choices now, or it wasn't your fault. You can't change history by yourself, or don't let your empathy for Athena make you forget your legitimate doubts. I mean, if everybody thought this way, then nobody would change history. I will, but it's hard not to regret the past. I'd like to help make New Jerusalem the city it was meant to be. And then, I'd like to help build new cities. On Earth and up there, too. Cities nobody's ever imagined before.
I don't know. I suspect he's around here somewhere, biding his time. But what he's waiting for, not a clue. Interesting. I'm hesitant about the other questions because we've got the journalist here. Where is that other person walking along? There you are. What can I do for you? Oh, that's Herman you, Nubis. Okay. Right. I should have looked at the name first. My chief aide, Jeremy, is in charge for now. It's good practice for him, in case he decides to run for office one day. It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. All right. There's a question mark in that way, and this one looks like a lab. Alright, let's do the lab first, I suppose. Oh, must be deers running up above. A lot of them, apparently. Ooh. Sounds like where they may have been testing the particle cloud stuff. Yep. Particle cloud tests. <laughs> wow, there's a lot in this one. Let's do these offshoots first. From Byron... ...to Athena. I just wish I knew why you didn't tell me. Message to Alexandra Drennan. From Corrupted... ...to Alexandra Drennan at Ian. Who do you think you are, playing God like that? When Mother Nature has finally, finally found a way of getting rid of us, you come up with this harebrained scheme to keep our destruction of the planet going? Just try for one second to think about something other than your own arrogance and hubris, Alexandra. Try to imagine what you're really doing there. Without your robotic perversions, the future looks beautiful. No more humans murdering everything in their path. Skies clear up, the stars become visible again, the rivers stop being filthy, and after a few decades they're full of fish again. Dolphins and whales roam the seas like their ancestors did. The cities turn into jungles. That's nests and the skyscrapers where hedge funds managers used to ruin lives. I think that's a typo right here. It says warranted wear. The earth lives on as it was meant to, peacefully and quietly, until some day in the distant future when it all ends like it was also meant to. Or we take your path, we continue our rampage, we place ourselves above the animals, we think we know better than Mother Nature, we violate all boundaries, we ruin all purity, perhaps we even defy death just so we can keep spreading our filth. Corruption. Then we spread to other planets to do more of the same. And in the end, what have we left behind but plastic and radiation? Think, Alexandra, isn't it better for beauty to return to the Earth, for us to acknowledge that intelligence was a mistake, and to gracefully exit while we can? Corruption. Stop this. Go spend time with your friends and loved ones before the end. Let it go. Let us all go. Let there be peace. Corruption. Yeah, definitely not like in this perspective. Because, I mean, we can improve, we, we can improve a lot of the things that have been complained, as you humans doing the improvements. It's just that we aren't doing that yet as a society. Not enough, anyway. Miranda says, I don't understand how someone could hate humanity so much. This person must have been full of sadness and frustration to write something so ugly. Athena says, I've tried to understand it as well, but I still don't. Well, I understand it pretty well because there's there's a lot of horrible things that have gone on in human history and even still going on today. Like, even the, you know, there's even still modern day slavery still going on. Even though it's illegal everywhere. And, uh... Obviously, the political, the political structures that we've still been continuing to prop up and support and validate... ...are still resulting in bad things happening to the planet, so... I can understand how people would take such a negative view of, our, of us as a species. But and things really don't have to be this way, you know? We, we can change things, it's just gonna be really difficult, but we can do it. Stratton on Socrates. 
against the Athenians and Socrates alike. Or Socrates, rather. <laughs> when the complete works of Stratina Sergeria, or Stagaira, you know, whatever I mean. In killing a philosopher for asking questions they did not like, the Athenians committed themselves to a tragedy with an ironic ending. Some will say that his true crime was his friendship with Alcibiades, the shameless deceiver of idiots and buffoons, and the insipid brute Critias, and that he was executed as an enemy of democracy. That he was the latter can hardly be denied, for Socrates asked not too many questions, but too few, or he would not have survived the rule of the Thirty Tyrants. Yet in the end, he got what he had asked for, a tyrannical decision made by would-be wise men against the spirit of freedom, which he obeyed like a knave. And the Athenians, in fulfilling his wishes, strangled the roots of democracy while seeking to preserve it. Miranda says, ouch, no wonder Stratton wasn't popular. Athena says, people who speak the truth at all times rarely are. <laughs> Just reminds me of that one meme. Uh, they hated him because he spoke the truth. From Thecla to Unknown. Beloved Founder, know that I do not believe any of the lies in the, the expedition is spreading about you. Corruption is right. This Prometheus illusion is just a test. We will te resist temptation as you once did. We will not disappoint. Praise your name, Thecla. Okay, so this is recent, isn't it? This has to be very recent. And also, this might be a translation key of sorts because we know what some of these should be. Interesting. The History of Athena Corruption was first published as Athena, a novel, and retained that title for its first three printings, now highly sought after. After a lull in popularity, it was reprinted as Athena Reborn, a novel. This edition retained the same text, but included some of the author's poetry. The next edition, however, published long after the author's death, under the rather embarrassing title Athena's Truth, included severe cuts and drastic changes to the text, in the interest of updating it for modern audiences. This particularly affected the last chapter, Anthropogeny, which the editors accused of scientism and human supremacy. Science wonder kid, science wonder kind Alexander Drennan was one of the few to come to the novel's defense, writing in a long essay that the novel's clear-eyed belief in the value of Athena's journey towards humanity had been essential to shaping her own views, encouraging her to pursue science as a vocation rather than a career, and that changing the text constituted an attack on the author's unique artistic and philosophical vision. Alex, who hurt you, LMAO? One of the editors commented on a popular social media platform. Nadia Sarabhai of the Institute for Applied Nomadics also got involved in the discussion, backing Drennan, resulting in a long but unsuccessful campaign to oust Sarabhai from her position as head researcher. In the current context of ecological catastrophe, as evidenced by recent extinction of the orangutan, clumsy editing aside, do the critics of the novel perhaps have a point after all? He is a philosophy that places humans above nature and sees science and technology as the only valid tools the cause of all our troubles. What about other ways of knowing, other ways of living? Brnyshevsky, in our likeness, essays on humankind or aging adulthood. On war, war is the crudest, most obscene human activity, and may justly be called an abomination, for it is the absolute negation of conscious human will. There is only a single cause of war for all the endless deceptions that are foisted upon us, and that is the acquisition of resources. Varied ideologies are constructed to justify this crude behavior, this childish degeneration of thought and communication, but history reveals the ruthless, unflattering truth. We imagine crusaders as fanatics of a cause willing to die for the religion. Yet the fourth crusade culminated not in the conquest of Jerusalem, but in the looting of Constantinople, setting the stage for the triumph of the very enemy the crusaders claimed to oppose. 
Why? The answer, as with every war, is the same. It is popular amongst the ghouls of the establishment and their misanthropic friends in the intelligentsia, intelligentsia to ascribe the persistence of war to human nature. But a careful observation of the facts reveals the opposite to be true. Individual human beings must be broken in order to submit to war, their minds distorted by ideology and their bodies by poverty and ruthless training to make them compliant. Without force, the majority of human beings only seek to protect themselves and are traumatized by the act of killing. But if it is the resources that are the core cause of war, then it is only in the production and distribution of resources that an answer may be found. It is not enough to morally condemn war, we must work to prevent the material issues that endanger us all. Yes. Yes, indeed. From Gouda to Athena, dear founder, I'm afraid that we're losing our humanity. We're angry at each other, always disagreeing about everything, unable to forgive each other for being different. I don't know how much longer, and I don't know what could save us. Please help us, founder, please. Ah, uh, the sad thing is, is it makes him even more human to be that way. Doesn't have to be that way, of course. Trial. Resuming trials with new protocols. Energy output contained, no errors. Uh, hyperbolic growth. Advanced synthesis. Lossless conversion. Interesting. Alright, well, thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye!